Hey everyone, uh, Inside Indiana Overtime again. Uh, Robbie Howard, Alice McCarthy with Inside Indiana. Um, here tonight at, at Mackey Arena where Indiana uh, kind of gets blown away by Purdue. Uh, 82-64 is really the inverse of what happened last year when Indiana beat Purdue at 37 here, uh, which was really one of the more impressive college basketball performances I've ever seen in person. Uh, last year, or this year was not one of the most <laughs> impressive. Uh, Indiana kind of falls apart after halftime. Um, you know, Purdue gets on a big run um, after what I thought was one of the more game-changing plays to close the half, the first half, uh, where it was, it was competitive, it was close really the whole time in the first half. And um, Yogi Ferrell actually had a shot in the last few seconds of the first half to, that would have given Indiana a one-point lead, uh, but instead he misses it, and in the scramble for the ball, um, Purdue freshman Basil Smotherman, Basil, Basil, you know, uh, gets fouled there, he goes to the line, makes his first, um, misses the second, but Indiana kind of misses him on, on boxing out, and there's a tip rebound, he puts it back in. It's a six point swing, Indiana's down by five at halftime, and then coming out of the gates in the second half, uh, it just wasn't there for Indiana. Robbie, what'd you see um, to open that second half? Well, Sterling Carter really went on his own personal run. He started with 10 straight points for Purdue. Purdue opened uh, on a 14 to one run in that second half and pretty much all of their shots were falling none of IU shots were falling IU would get some good shots some good looks but they missed 12 layups tonight and it's tough to win a game when you miss 12 layups and end up shooting 32 percent from the field yeah and it was it was like you said it was kind of completely the opposite for Purdue uh, where they almost hit 60 percent shooting from the field in the second half and they're almost at 50 percent for the game um, and from three they were something 55. ridiculous 55 percent um, and Carter, you know, you know, you pointed him out. He was five for six from from behind the arc, um, and, and he, he came into the game shooting twenty six percent. Yeah, from yeah. behind the arc, which is like when it's your night, it's your night, I guess. <laughs> uh, and it was his. It was certainly his. Uh, at least at the opening of the second half was certainly, uh, yeah. you know, it was half of his points were right there in that run right there, um, and really Purdue was was able to shoot the ball well from from basically everywhere. I mean, they missed a couple layups, but other than that, uh, they absolutely filled it up from behind the arc. Um, and Indiana just didn't have an answer. I mean, the, the offense yielded some some open shots. I mean, they got some offensive rebounds um, and just couldn't really, a lot of times just couldn't really do anything with them uh, with open layups, open shots. Couldn't get anything going on the fast break. Yeah, yeah, they were Nothing only held. In transition. Yeah, they were only held to four fast break points. Uh, only six in total, fast break points in total for the game, uh, which is kind of both a testament to the way Purdue was able to slow down the game a little bit and a testament to Indiana missing a lot of, both teams missing a lot of um, kind of easy shots yeah. in transition. Um, and, and Yogi Ferrell pointed out after the game that Indiana's transition defense wasn't, wasn't that good and that was how Purdue was kind of able to find gaps and get its, uh, its, some of its open threes. Um, but speaking of Ferrell, he actually had a, had a, had a big night, which we didn't, we didn't even really pick up on. Um, you know, we, we were sitting next to each other during the game and, and you pointed out to me late that um, holy crap, Yogi has 24 points, and, and I almost didn't believe you, and I had to check. Um, and he ends with 27, which uh, ties uh, the second most he's had in a single game during his IU career. Um, he may, he's not very efficient from the floor. He shoots 6 for 17, um, but he makes four threes, makes 11, um, 11 free throws, um, and he's kind of able to get his points that way, uh, where maybe he missed a ton of shots, but, but the shots that he missed, or made rather, yeah. uh, were fairly, fairly valuable ones, to in, at least to his scoring total, but they were, a lot of them came late in the game when it was clear that, I mean, this game was over for the last 15 minutes of it, really. I mean, as soon as that run happened to open the half, it just kind of really all fell apart. Yeah. Um, it was interesting to hear the players and Tom Crean talk about how they felt like this was really mental that they, it really just got away from them and, and mentally they're not able to overcome when a team goes on a big run like that. Yeah. So they're just not there. Yeah, and, and that seems to be a theme recently, uh, that mentally Indiana's yeah. just not there. Uh, they get, uh, you know, the, all of them said, all of the players who were available to us after the game Wednesday, uh, after the Penn State game, used the word panic, uh, which is not usually something you hear from a team playing at home against an opponent who has three conference wins at this point in the season, um, and where it's that mental fortitude just isn't still, for some reason, isn't there with Indiana. Um, you know, with some some mental lapses both on the court and notably off the court this week. Obviously, Hunter Perea 
did not make the trip up here. Um, he was in jail last night, um, and uh, it's just that that seems to be the, the, the whole you know the, the past week has just been a slew of uh, mental lapses on the part of Indiana, um, which at this point in the season is more than concerning. I mean, it's it's almost um, it's there's it's hard to put into words how um, surprising that is. That still. Uh, there are these mistakes of their turnovers. I mean, they turned the ball over like crazy in the first five or six minutes of the game. They, they recovered and actually turned it over fewer times than, uh, than Purdue did. But early on, they're just throwing the ball away. And, and late, they just couldn't hit a shot at all. Um, they play Iowa on Tuesday. Um, four of their last six games are against opponents that are ranked right now. Um, they play at Wisconsin. Tough yeah, yeah, they play home against <laughs> Iowa, at Wisconsin, at Michigan. Um, they play a couple other teams that uh, that have proven that they can beat them. They play both Northwestern and Nebraska, who've already beaten them. Um, so I, I, I'm not really sure what to look for uh, the rest of the season. Robbie, I mean, what, if anything, what can help Indiana finish on a somewhat positive note to the season? They got to draw confidence from somewhere. I mean, something from within themselves, whether it comes from Green or someone else from the coaching staff, whether it comes from someone outside. They they just need some confidence right now confidence in themselves that they can make some shots, that they can make some stops, and that if a game is close, coming down to the stretch, that they can hang in that game and do what they need to do to get a win. Because right now, I mean, this is three straight games in which we've seen second-half collapses. Yeah. I mean, and they've all three, well, the, the Penn State game and the Minnesota game were sort of similar yeah. collapses. The Penn yeah. State one just markedly worse. Yeah. Uh, this one was a second-half collapse in the first five minutes. You know, they came out and they just, they really didn't show up in the first five minutes. And so they get blown out, you know. And, and so you got to figure out something that, whether it's something you say at halftime, whatever, you have to get the second half cleaned up. That's going to be the only way that they are able to turn this around. Yeah, and we'll see if that happens. We'll be there against Iowa, obviously. Uh, we hope you continue watching, even though maybe the team is kind of spiraling out of control. But uh, thanks for watching, uh, if, if you are still watching. <laughs> Uh, for Robbie Howard, I'm Alex McCarthy, and uh, you enjoy the rest of your weekend.